Depression has been called the world's number one public health problem. In fact, it is so widespread it is considered the common cold of psychiatric disturbances. But there is a grim difference between depression and a cold. Depression can kill you. Hello, my name is Jeff, and I do bike rides around Tahoe. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm out on the Canyon Neuron in Tahoe Donner. Now for the main qu question. Does cycling cure depression or sadness or anxiety or anything else that might be plaguing your life right now. I think depression is one of those terms that just is a, a wet blanket. Kind of covers about everything. But it could be quite a few things, whereas you're overly fatigued from stress, you know, and anxious all the time, it's like major sadness. And all these come in waves they can last a couple days, maybe they'll last months, years. And it's what do we do to get through these times? Does cycling ward off or cure <clears throat> any kind of like anger, sadness, anxiety, stress, or and the all encompassing word depression? And the answer is no. Cycling is great because it gets you outside. Um, you know, it makes you more healthy and then combined with a good nutrition program. Now, as all these elements will definitely help, they will not cure you. I think they're just part of the key. And the main part is being involved with other people's lives, helping them where you can, and hopefully they reciprocate that. So, combination of getting outside on your bike running doing swims anything that's getting your heart rate up cardiovascular can even be weightlifting you know anything where you're improving yourself and then with a good nutrition program also though not just focusing on yourself with improving your own health and fitness but helping other people do the same and that sharing and just being there for others kind of takes you out of your own thought patterns and your own focus just on yourself, which just kind of helps feed um, this level of anxiety, stress, depression, sadness. Look outside of yourself for the answer. Now the caveat to doing things for other people and fitness and exercise, nutrition, is you don't want to go too crazy with the exercise side <laughs> and you don't want to take out the spice of life from just eating chicken breast and broccoli all day either <laughs> so there's a balance the more you exercise the more you get out there and the potential for overtraining and thus, put, thus putting that extra element of tiredness on your body and mind leaving it susceptible to any kind of depression or um, feelings of stress, anxiety. Yeah. On my own personal level, I've always used exercise as a way of coping without really even knowing what I was doing at the time. From racing mountain bikes, road bikes, triathlons, and any other sport I could seem to get my hands around at the time. I didn't know it was also a way of coping and creating a sense of being and my own identity in sports as a way of also coping with the issues that plagued in my mind, whether it was from constant anxiety, feeling of sadness, whether that was in my own life or seeing others in hardship 
growing up, I spent so much time exercising on the bike, running, swimming, at the gym. I almost began thinking to regret exercise because I had a feeling it was holding me back from a career, maybe in the corporate world, like starting my own business, etc. But maybe now I'm starting to realize that without it, where would I actually be in that world? Maybe I wouldn't be any better now than I am now. It's a simple life at this time being in Tahoe, but it is a good one. I do have what I need and to be happy. And I guess in the end, that's all we can really all hope for.